This video about Woody and you, a jazz standard with some uh, unusual changes and I got a question on my channel if I could maybe uh, walk you through it, give you maybe some tips and tricks to navigate especially the A part because the B part is, is pretty basic, it's just uh, two five ones. And if you're wondering about the background, I'm still in Los Angeles we're one day before the start of NAM, and I'll be there in the Altamira booth to demo the new line of uh, guitars that Altamira made uh, with uh, dimensions more like a real Selmer, and, and those guitars are all amazing. I'm, I'm playing one right now, but this is the, the cheapest in the line, and I think it, it sounds great already, but it hasn't been set up. This is the model T, if I'm not mistaken, but the other ones that have been set up, they are already at NAM, and this one will be set up too, and there will be four models in this line. So, but let's get back to uh, Woody and you. Um, so the, big, the, the A part is just a string of two five ones, or two fives, ending in a one, but it's all minor two fives. So, since people are not really used to play on minor two fives, or much less than major two fives, and now it's three in a row, it might seem challenging. Now I made a video about a trick to use on um, minor two fives. I will link it in the description. So you could start there and take a look at this, at that um, concept. And it would still work in Woody New, but because it's three in a row, it might be nice to, to have some other uh, things you could play. So I have some cheat codes for you. Let's take a look. So the first thing that you could do is, is the trick that I showed you in the other video, and that is convert all the uh, half diminished chords to minor chords. So it starts with a G half diminished, which is the same as a B flat minor chord. So you could play B flat minor six. I'm thinking B flat minor, and you could just play the, the standard minor six arpeggios, right? Uh, I have a video about that too, I will link it, and you could just Play that minor six arpeggio over both the G half diminished and the C um, seven. It would work. So B flat minor six to A flat minor six, F sharp minor six, resolve to D flat major. All right. What you could do is you could play the minor six down and then go diminished up. On the C7, so you could go diminished from the G or from the E. So you could go, you could do right, or you go go up from the G. Or you could do the other way around. So go up with a minor six. So I, I start on the G, for instance, now. And then go down with this altered scale. And then just move that down uh, on all those two fives. So like this. All 
Yeah. Right? And um, those added skills I talk about in the video Gypsy Jazz Loops, which I will link. All those uh, patterns are there. So that, that works fine. And you could combine all of that, right? You could say, okay, the first um, two five, I'm just going to play minus six up and down. And now I'm going to do minus six down, diminished up. And now minus six down. Um, diminished up again. I'll do minus six up. Alpha down. Minus six down. Diminished. But you could combine them. Okay, that works great. And um, it's, it's a good way to start. But the problem is, of course, that you're just kind of shifting all those patterns down. So it becomes a little bit monotonous. So another really cool cheat you could use is convert all the two fives into a major seven chord. And the way that works is maybe you've um, seen or heard this forcing. It's a really cool forcing for G half to minutes, right? So you have, you have the G under my thumb on the uh, A string. And I'll play this forcing. If you wonder what it is, it is, uh, so it's, it is uh, no note on the E string, even though I'm fretting it. I'm starting with 10 on the A string, and then it's 11, 10, 10, 8. That is a, a really cool voicing for a G half diminished. And the funny thing is there is no third in it. Now, if you make that A, that 9 and A flat, what do you get? You get D flat major 7. Now, of course, there is some friction between the, the root, but it's only one note difference. The thing is, you can just play major seven lines on top of the G major G half diminished, and it will sound fine. In fact, you can play D flat major seven lines on top of the C seven, and you, you get a kind of an altered um, sus sound. So you have a C major seven right, uh, D flat major seven right there. If I put a C in the bass, right? There's, it sounds pretty nice. But the thing is, you will never hear it like that because you're playing linear lines. So your lines are moving, right? You're not gonna stop on the A flat or you're not gonna stop on the F on C7. You're just gonna play flowing lines. So now the change has become D flat major seven, for two bars, B flat major seven, A, resolve to D flat major seven. Lines could start sound like this, one, two, three, four. Right, so I'm playing D flat major 7. Now I switch to B major 7. And now I have to switch to A major 7. D flat major 7. I'll do it again. D flat major 7. B flat major 7. Uh, B major 7. A, F, uh, D flat. You still hear the changes. cool and and it's not that hard if you know your major seven alliance arpeggios and if you don't know them i'll link a video in the description in which i teach all those lines with tap and notes and now you can combine the major seven sound with the altered sound right you could play uh, because you can skip the 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 the, the half diminished and just go immediately to the dominant so right instead of playing 
thinking C7, altered, B flat altered, A flat. Right? Now, I could do an interesting thing by playing on the first two five, I'm playing D flat major seven. Go to B flat altered. Well, that was B flat octatonic, but uh, like kind of a this sound. And then go back to A major seven. Right, so D flat major seven. B flat altered. A flat. A major 7, D flat. Now start C7 altered. B, flat, B, B major 7, A major 7. Sorry about messing up with all those chord names, but it's just when I'm playing and thinking and I have to say chord names in English. I mess up, because in Dutch all the uh, note names are one syllable, right? We don't have B flat and B, it's both one different word, so just clarifying. Um, so now you have all those tricks, you have um, skipping the, the half diminished chord and just playing alto dominance, you have um, playing minor six arpeggios, you have diminished arpeggios and you have this major seven trick. And now if you combine all of that and find connection points between all of those, you will feel a lot of freedom. And you don't have to worry about needing to outline, have diminished to uh, dominant. Of course that works too, but I think this will give you more freedom. And also you don't have to th worry about switching skills all the time. You could do that too, but if you use this way, you will uh, have clearer resolutions, which is the point of these kinds of changes because all those two files resolve into each to one another. And that's the big advantage of not using chord skill theory, but instead using more functional thinking by playing arpeggios, which is what I'm trying to teach you right here. So this, okay, I hope this helps. Okay, I hope this helps. Uh, again, I'm in Los Angeles. Tomorrow I will be at NAM. Is it tomorrow or is it the day after? I don't know, I don't know the day today, but it's the 24th will be the first day. And I'll be at booth 1313, uh, which is the Altamira booth. So if you're there, I hope you come and see me and we can talk guitars or talk licks or theory. We can talk theory uh, or uh, cheat codes or uh, chord hacks, whatever you want. And we can jam. I hope to see you there or I will see you in the next video. And as always, please subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. Bye.